Okay, we'll start with the stress energy. Normally, we have three types of stresses. One is the normal stress. Second is the shear stress, and third is bending stress. So, initially, we introduce you how to develop the equation for stress energy for normal stress, shear stress, and bending stress. Once we finish this, then we'll develop the equation for axial loading. That will normally develop the normal stress. Shear stress are produced in torsion. So we develop the equation for shear stress due to torque, and finally we develop the equation of stress energy due to bending. That is the shear force and bending moment diagram. So what is basically the stress energy? When a body is strained, the energy is absorbed in the body. Whatever the body is given to you, and you try to strain that body. Suppose you are given here one bar, and you apply the force to this bar. Because of the force applied, the body will be get deformed. So there is some elastic energy stored. Inside the body, the maximum energy stored is up to elastic limit. That is S Y T. If you release that, if you release the force, the amount of energy stored in the body, that type of energy is called as the strain energy. So, in fact, what we are going to do is that the material is capable of doing the work. So, we will first develop the expression for work, and the equivalent amount of strain energy is stored in return to its original temperature. So, basically, it based on law of conservation of energy. So whatever the delta U is there, the amount of energy stored is same as work done. Work you can done in any form, either in the form of potential energy or in the form of kinetic energy. So it's a request to you for this chapter, you have to use SI unit because the potential energy and kinetic energy are familiar with the thermodynamics where we are normally follow SI units and the delta U you normally follow in the machine design is Newton mm. So there is a lot of confusion in this one. So better to go for normal stress. We are using mega Pascal or Newton per m square. So we are using only Pascal. So all the normal stresses will be Pascal. Bending will be Newton meter. Torque will be Newton meter radian. Axial loading will be force. Length will be meter. Diameter meter. Area meter square. Volume meter cube. So that is the. Make this habit of SI unit for particularly for this chapter to avoid the error. So whatever the force we apply in this case here, we get a deformation, and we are familiar with the formula of the stress strain that is P is given, uh, DL is given by PL multiplied by area divided by E. Can also be written as sigma L by E, and we have another equation that is stress E equals to stress. Divided by stress. So this one is your chapter one, stress strain. So initially, first cover cover the chapter one, and all the form will be converted to stress energy. So when you apply the load equal to zero, there is no deformation. As soon as you apply, the, start applying the load from zero to p value, zero to p value. So you are incre gradually increasing the load. As you gradually increase the load, will the value of dl will change? Yes. For the particular figure, length is constant, a is constant, e is constant. So can we conclude that the DL is directly proportional to P? If the DL is directly proportional to P, can we claim here on the graph that if this axis is P and this axis is DL, and if we have proportionality constant here is equal to K, so is it a nothing but this graph? This graph clearly indicates that the DL is proportional to P. So initially, what is this called as gradual loading? What is meaning of gradual loading? At t equal to zero, your load is zero. As the time will increase, the load will also increase proportionally. And if you apply the load like this, it is called as sudden loading. Sudden loading means that at t equal to zero, or for any time, your load is constant. So right now we are not discussing sudden loading, but we will introduce you sudden loading after some time. So there is a difference between sudden loading and gradual loading. In the case of gradual loading, zero. Final value will go on increasing, and it will increase proportionately, not non-linearly. It is not gradual loading, non-linear curve. So, in case of gradual loading at t equal to zero, your force is zero. That is this point. At t equal to two, your force is somewhere here. So, let's say this value equals to p. The corresponding deformation is dl. So, what is the average force applied? So, average force is taken as p average is equal to initial force plus final force. Divided by two because it's a linear, and therefore this value is zero plus p divided by two is same as p by two. 
so on an average you apply the force equal to p by 2 from this point to this point initially our force is 0 finally we have force is p so on an average we apply the force equal to p by 2 whereas in the case of sudden loading at t equal to 0 this value equals to p at t equal to t your value is p so on an average you are applying the load equal to p it means that you get horizontal line so let come the definition of work so work is basically defined as average force multiplied by displacement that is the basic definition of work and average force we have applied is p by 2 and our displacement is equals to dl so this is the equation of work done this work done is stored in the form of energy that is called as energy so this is the equation of u strain energy is represented by letter capital u capital u total strain energy and small u for strain energy density now take the physical meaning of this one is p divided multiplied by dl divided by 2 is nothing but the area under this diagram so this area under force versus displacement is it called as work done and is work done itself is called as strain energy so it is the first equation for u so first equation of u is u equals to 1 by 2 now using these basic equations you can develop number of equations from this so one by one we can develop the equation okay we will replace this dl by pl by a so we get another equation of u so u equals to 1 by 2 multiplied by p multiplied by p l by a p multiplied by p is p square multiplied by l divided by a so this is second equation use this equation to find out the strain energy if your force is constant over the all sections so we go back to the first formula u equals to 1 by 2 multiplied by p multiplied by dl now it is known that the force can be written as stress multiplied by area so this is 1 by 2 stress multiplied by area and dl can be written as sigma l by e so it is written as sigma l by e so this sigma and this sigma is sigma square a into l is volume of this material and divided by e so this is another equation is 1 by 2 multiplied by sigma square multiplied by volume divided by e use this equation if your stress is constant in all the elements if you are given three blocks and he says that the stress is constant in all the three members and you want to compare the synergy use this equation if you has given the three different blocks or the three members in series and the force is constant use this equation for comparison of strain energy so we are u equals to again 1 by 2 multiplied by p multiplied by dl this is the basic equation can be written as 1 by 2 again the force is written as sigma multiplied by area dl can be written as sigma multiplied by l divided by e sigma divided by e is it same as epsilon that is the strain so this equals to 1 by 2 multiplied by stress multiplied by strain multiplied by volume let us define one term here called as strain energy density it is written as small u it is capital U divided by volume just like in thermodynamics we write enthalpy and specific enthalpy internergy specific internergy entropy specific so just like this we have a strain energy but in density form so this is u small u is capital u divided by volume so what is u u is strain energy density this is newton meter divided by meter cube work done work done is newton meter and volume in meter cube or is joules per meter cube and if you try to solve it further it can be expanded okay let us continue this equation this is u is equal to capital U divided by volume this is U divided by volume is it equal to 1 by 2 sigma multiplied by epsilon so this is 1 by 2 sigma multiplied by epsilon inference of this graph you can take on stress strain diagram so we have a stress versus strain diagram and for stress strain diagram up to elastic limit we are working up to elastic limit only so we are up to this graph according to this equation is it 1 by 2 sigma multiplied by epsilon so somewhere i will mark sigma somewhere i will mark epsilon so is this value is same as the area under stress strain diagram this area is this area is 1 by 2 stress multiplied by strain but this quantity is lower case this was the total 
and this is the density. So if you go for the stress strain diagram, what is the maximum value of sigma permitted? Is it SYT? And the corresponding value will be epsilon. Is it elastic limit? So what is the maximum energy that you can store for the stress energy? What is the value, maximum value of U max or U max? Is this corresponds to 1 by 2 multiplied by SYT multiplied by epsilon for elastic limit. This one is called as resilience, modulus of resilience. And this U max, if you multiply it by volume, that is become total energy. So what is the total strain energy stored is U max is 1 by 2 multiplied by SYT multiplied by epsilon of elastic limit multiplied by volume. This is called as proof resilience. This is also strain energy but of total volume. Previously it was per volume. This equation is uh, U max that is the strain density maximum is 1 by 2 SYT multiplied by elastic strain up to elastic limit can also be expressed in this form except this volume you have to shift on this side so is it 1 by 2 SYT square divided by E all this form you can use here so this also equals to 1 by 2 multiplied by SYT whole square divided by E and this form also you can write in as 1 by 2 as SYT square divided by E multiplied by volume. So they can ask you objective question on any of this form.